Welcome back to Release Radar. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we're talking about Super Smash Brothers. And today we're talking about Mortal Kombat. And today we're talking about rollback networking. Rollback networking has been used in many fighting games over the years, including Mortal Kombat, and has even been integrated in games like Super Smash Bros. with the Slippy version of Dolphin, using a custom rollback networking implementation. Describing rollback networking doesn't take very long. Imagine you're playing a fighting game, 1v1 on a 2D arena, two players jumping around. When you're playing against your opponent, your client will continue simulating your opponent, typically using the last move that they inputted. So if they're standing still, they're very likely to be standing still in the next frame, which is what will happen on your client. If it turns out that two frames ago, the opponent actually pressed a button and started throwing a punch at you, this is a fighting game after all, what will happen is that your client will receive that information, will realize that it has to roll back to two frames ago, and when it does this, it will simulate the last two frames and then run the current frame, all in the span of your current frame. This is where the rollback name for rollback networking comes from. It's used in deterministic game systems that can be rolled back and then simulated and then continue. The result being that you almost don't even notice this happening. Your inputs are smoothly transferred into your client, the game feels responsive, and then your inputs are sent over the network to your opponent where the same thing happens. Now, if there is a large difference between what the client thinks your opponent was going to do and what they actually did, this can cause a pop on the screen. This is part of the reason that some fighting games prevent large movements from happening in the first couple frames of move. Because if you use rollback networking and the first couple frames aren't actually large movements, it doesn't look like much change if you have to roll back and replay. For example, Overwatch uses this technique. If you get frozen by May's special, right as you use your special, you can see yourself jump forward and your special cooldown tick off. And then a split second later, you'll get pulled back into the position that you were because you were actually frozen. And you'll see that you get your special back without any cooldown. This is one of the effects that you can observe when games use rollback networking. But most of the time, this results in a more responsive, better user experience. So where did rollback networking come from? GGPO, also known as Good Game Peace Out, is a networking library that, as far as I can tell, is the very first implementation of rollback networking for generic use in peer-to-peer -peer games. It's an SDK written in C++ with an MIT license. According to their documentation, GGPO uses a network technique called rollback, which we just discussed. Rather than waiting for other players' inputs to be received before simulating the next frame, like in a lockstep algorithm, GGPO predicts the inputs that they're going to send and simulates the next frame without any delay using that assumption. When the other players' inputs arrive, if any of our assumptions prove untrue, GGPO rolls the state of the game back to the state at which the input should be applied then replays all of the player's input in addition to the opponent's input and simulates the rest of the frames, up until the point at which you currently exist. The hope, of course, is that predictions will be accurate most of the time, and it turns out that they are accurate most of the time. If you think about the number of inputs a person can actually put into a controller, it doesn't turn out to be that fast. So the prediction of what they did in the last frame can be accurate easily up to 90%. With a 60 frames per second game, if you can only put in five button presses per second, that leaves us with 55 presses that are very likely to be the same as the one before. Which brings us to Backroll. Backroll RS is a pure Rust implementation of the GGPO library. Backroll, of course, is in an untested alpha state as of the recording of this video. Although the public facing API is largely stable, the library still needs to be tested in real world games. Now, just because it's a port to Rust doesn't mean that there aren't changes that are not the changes that you would expect just from a Rust rewrite. Now, the changes you would expect are more memory safety, et cetera, et cetera, but those are sort of uninteresting when it comes to the actual functionality. We know a rewrite in Rust will likely bring us memory safety guarantees that we didn't have in a C code base. So aside from the typical safety guarantees, Backroll RS gives us an abstracted transport layer, which we can write backing implementations for using UDP or any other protocol that we want to. Additionally, there are some changes to the user experience of using the GGPO library when it comes to Backroll, including multi-threaded IO being less manual and not blocking the game's execution. The Backroll RS repo includes the Backroll crate, which is the straight port of GGPO, a network transport layer abstraction crate, a UDP implementation of that network transport abstraction layer, and a prototype of integrating Backroll with Bevy, a library that I've been using quite a bit lately. So understandably, the Bevy crate is what I'm interested in the most, because if you've been watching my recent work, I've been working on games like 2048, Snake, and Tetris in Bevy. 
Backroll RS opens up a whole new world of 2D fighting games that I can start to build with Betty that I didn't have access to before. Finally, Backroll RS also intends to support the Steam networking layer, the Epic networking layer, and WebRTC, which also opens up numerous possibilities for shipping to the web and other platforms. <laughs>